Hey, welcome to the induction heating video part one. I say part one because, well, more on that later. I got this induction heater on Amazon for like, I don't know, $30 or something. And uh, it came pretty quickly and I knew it was gonna be a lot of fun to play with because I've seen lots of videos on YouTube. And I was actually hoping to heat treat some steel with it. I got some pretty good use out of it. I managed to get it fired up. I heat treated some steel parts. It easily gets steel up to the temperature that you can quench it at to harden it. Um, 4140 and 01, for example. Uh, but uh, A2, it doesn't seem to quite get hot enough. Um, for something like 4140 and 01, uh, they're oil quench steels, and you want to heat them up until they're about cherry red. But uh, A2, you want to heat it up until it's like bright orange. Uh, that's about 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and then you can just cool it down in atmosphere. There I was, heat treating some steel and minding my own business, and I heard this weird liquid bubbling sound. Uh, still don't know what it was. Um, but five minutes later, I started hearing some popping noises on... Uh, on the induction heater, and it turns out that these high frequency capacitors exploded. Crazy! Uh, what I think happened is um, the coil itself actually got too hot, and you can see the solder here is all melted. Just the fact that it was getting so hot made the capacitor expand and crack. Uh, the unit still turns on, but I don't think I'm going to turn it on again. It's, it's one of those units that's kind of scary powerful and surprisingly not safe. For all the work that seems to have gone in the circuit board, the way they attach the uh, the copper is surprisingly disappointing, actually. Um, what they do, they take these standoffs, and they screw them all together like this. So that is not a very solid connection. Uh, I guess props to them for coming up with this. It's creative in a way, I guess. But if you're going to make a million and a half of these things, I, I don't know why they wouldn't have just gone for sort of a, a plug, maybe. Um, I don't know. So this unit's actually quite powerful. Uh, it says it goes up to one kilowatt. I'm not sure if I totally believe that. Uh, let's see. 20 amps, 50 volts, yeah, 1,000 watts, I guess. Um, it's rated 20 amps, 50 volts. Uh, I'm using 48 volts right now at 7.8 amps, which I thought would give me a pretty good factor of safety. Um, it turns out the way this failed was definitely due to overheating. Uh, the instructions said nothing about actually cooling the coil, but in hindsight, I should have cooled the coil. I should have known better. I guess the most important thing for using one of these is how to properly connect it. You're going to do your positive DC coming out of your power supply, goes to this lug here, then your negative goes to the negative on the DC power supply. And then you've got your ground, your live, and your neutral. One interesting thing about induction heaters in general is uh, when they start up, they kind of need a kick to get the oscillation started. So. What you have to do is actually put a switch on your DC rather than on your AC. You sort of think instinctually it's safer to be able to turn off the power at the source, which normally makes sense, but if you turn on the power while this is completed, while the circuit's closed, this doesn't get enough of a kick to actually start oscillating, and uh, then you're just short-circuiting it through these two um, MOSFETs, and one of them, whichever one is active, will blow up. While I was heat treating the parts, I was actually working on some parts for the 100 subscriber appreciation project, which is now 150 subscribers because I take too long to make projects apparently. Um, and I actually tried to use this to, uh, to heat color some of the steel parts. I, I'm afraid I went full clickspring. Good day and welcome to clickspring. In this video, I'm taking a piece of steel, shining it, turning it blue. So let's get started. Huh. Never does that when Clickspring does it. But anyways. I used a 48 volt power supply because it actually heats things up a lot faster. 
This is because the higher the voltage, the faster the current can stabilize in the coil, but the current determines how hot it will get. Induction heaters work basically by creating a magnetic field inside this coil. It switches back and forth so much it creates what are called eddy currents, which are a source of inefficiency in most systems. And this you want the eddy current because the eddy current actually makes uh, conductive materials get very hot. So this could heat up a piece of steel, say this screwdriver, probably in a couple of seconds. So in summary, I got a cheap toy, I played with it a little while, and I broke it. Just like every remote control helicopter you've ever had. But, I've decided I'm going to order another one, and I'm going to do it properly. When I get the new one, I'm planning on cooling the coils by pumping water through them. I actually just got my little DC pump in the mail the other day. What is this for? I also got this other pump from a store that shall remain nameless. All in all, I would suggest getting this induction heater for a home shop. It's actually quite useful. I would just also recommend that you don't cut any corners. You should take the time to get this cooled off properly. You should wire it correctly. You should put the switch in the right place. And you should also take some time to epoxy down some of these loose components. It's pretty bad. Well, that's all for this video. Please like and subscribe if you want to follow up with this project, or follow my tiny lathe build. I've also got some other projects coming up that I hope you'll be interested in. Cheers!